People don't understand that the Satan is the prince of the air. By Satan being the prince of the air, he's an invisible spirit. It's his job that whenever somebody speaks negative, it's his job to bring that negative image into your mind. It's his job to make you feel bad, to make you think bad, to make you think that things is not going to get any better. The enemy is coming after your belief system because he don't want you to believe what it is that the Father has called you to set what the, what the father called for you. The enemy wants you to be led by your emotions. He wants you to be led by your feelings. But we got to begin to understand as kingdom people, we got to understand that we are children of God. And that we got to understand by being children of God, we got to understand the reason why Jesus came. Jesus came here to deliver mankind back to their rightful place how we was in the garden before mankind sinned. But we got to understand through our upbringing, our upbringing, how we was raised, what was poured into us, it come, you got to remind yourself that you're made of a soul, a spirit, and a body. You got to understand your soul is the real you, so your mind has recorded all different kind of images. If you see a newborn baby, even when you was a baby in your mother's womb all the way to now, you have seen and you have heard all kind of images, all kind of words, all kind of things being spoken into your life, and the enemy allowed this because he wanted to damage us. He wanted to wound us. He wanted us to make us think that God don't love us and that God don't care about us. He want us to think that what we see in our life is going to always be like this. But God told me to tell you he is restoring the relationship back to, of his children coming back to the Father. Come on here. I'm telling you, God told me to tell you he is restoring the relationship with the Father. He's restoring us back to the Father, because subconsciously, the enemy wanted us to look at God like he was a judge that's sitting on his throne, far away, waiting to send us to hell. Don't have no emotions, don't have no feelings that he don't love us, and that he just waiting to send us to hell. The enemy wanted some of us to look at Jesus and to look at God like that, uh, if, if he's such a loving God, why he let these people die? Why he let this earthquake in? Why he let me get raped? Why he let me get molested? Why did all these bad things happen to me if he's such a loving father? Come on, because I'm trying to talk to you about the father. Because God told me you've been telling them about the kingdom. You've been telling them about Holy Spirit. But I want you to tell them about God, the father. He said, because I want to let you know my third point. He said, because the devil wanted you to look at God, the father, like your natural father. He said, I come to tell you I ain't like your natural father. Just because he left, he said, I won't leave you. Just because how he did you, I'm not going to do you the way he do you. He said, because I want to let you know I love you with an everlasting love. He said, you know church, but we don't know the father. Who is the father? God is the Theos. He's the supreme deity. He's the Godhead. He's the first person. He's the Alpha or the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the one that created the heaven and the earth. He's God the Father. That you got to understand the Bible says he came out of nowhere and created himself. And understanding that when mankind sinned he said I'm going to send my son and send my son Jesus in the natural to show my children that I love them. To show them what I have, what I would do for them. How I want them to change. How I don't want them to be bound. I don't want them to be limited. So he sent Jesus. So Jesus is the second part to the Godhead. And when Jesus died on the cross and he rose with all power in his hand. The Bible talked about it in Acts 2. He said, I'm going to send them a comforter. I'm going to send them a friend. I'm going to send them a standby. I'm going to send them somebody that will let them know that they never by themselves. Regardless of what it looks like, I'm always going to be with you. If you go to the strip club, I'm going to be with you. If you go get high, I'm going to be with you. You go out there in the world, I'm going to be there with you. He said that I'll never leave you nor forsake you. We talk about God the Father. He said, when you going through, I'm right there with you. When you feel like you're going to lose your mind, I'm right there with you. When you don't have any food in your refrigerator, I'm right there with you. When people walk away from you, I'm letting you know I'm right there with you. We talking about God the Father. He said, because I want to let you know you are my creation. I told you God is a God. Of, he's a generational God. Whenever you read the Bible, the Bible says, he said, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God is a family God. God is the type of God that he loves you so much that he will not only want to take care of you, but he want to take care of your children, 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 
your children. He want to bless you. He want to bless your family. He wants some children that will look like him. I ain't never seen no parent that don't want their children to look like them. All parents want their children to look like them. Because you say, oh, that's a little me there. Oh, I know I should do that. Oh, I should act like that. All, children, all parents want their children to look like them. But the people in the body of Christ. You ever seen a bunch of people talking about I'm a child of God, but we don't look nothing like him. We don't talk like him. We don't act like him. So you got to ask yourself with the modern private show, who's your dad? Because you got all these people. Oh, we've been together. He's the only one I've been with. But the paternity test say, uh... 99.9, he ain't the father. Why? Because they looking at the DNA of the child. Yes, that's good. God said, because when you are my child, you're going to have my DNA. Right. You're going to have my RNA. Right. You're going to act like me. You're going to talk like that's me. Right. You're going to smell like You're going to do what I did. The Bible said you'll know a tree by the fruit that it bears. Right. Are we perfect? No, ain't none of us perfect. But God said, you should be looking like me. When you read your Bible, your Bible is a book of patterns. It's a book of laws. It's a book of commands to show you how to walk in this invisible kingdom. And we said that we love the Lord, but yet we don't read this word of God. How can you love somebody and you don't know nothing about them? Don't tell me you love me and you don't know what hurt my feeling if I was this thing. Don't tell me you love me, Elder Mar, when you don't know what make me cry. Don't tell me you care for me and you can treat me any kind of way. Don't tell me you love me, but yet you don't know my name. You don't know what I like. You don't know my dislike. But you said that you love this invisible God that go with you everywhere you go. But whenever anybody asks you what he's saying, you don't have nothing to say. Come on, Evangelist, you and your friend can go somewhere. She thinks she know you. But how is it that we got this spirit of God on the inside of us? He go everywhere we go. We go to the club, he right there. We go to the restaurant, we go to the mall. He's right there with us. But whenever you going through, you don't hear him saying nothing to you. Do you really love your father? Because really, he's showing us that we got some father issues. Oh, no, I ain't got no father issues. I got a good relationship with my father. How is it that this man going somewhere with you everywhere you go? You'll get up in the morning. You'll call your friend. You'll call your lover. Good morning, baby. How you doing? But you ain't spoke to the person that lives inside of you. Do you really love your father? You mean tell me you can spend time with this man five and six hours? You can spend time with this woman three and four hours? And you sit up here, can't spend them but five minutes with your God, and you say, and he lives inside of you, and you say you love him? Is that really love? Because see, how can I be in a relationship with somebody that don't want to spend no time with me? Even in the world, that's an indication that you really don't want me the way that you say you do. He said, but you said that you my children, but yet you don't want to spend no time with me. I don't want to read the Bible because it's boring. I don't understand. God said, you got how many different versions? You got the Bible on your phone. You got the Bible on the TV. You got all different kind of versions, but you said that you still don't understand it. You got the message Bible that will talk to you like how we talking. If we claim we don't understand, no, you don't want to understand. You want that woman more than you want him. You want that man more than you want him. And talk about I love God, the Father. I ain't got no problem with my father. Yes, you do. Because if you didn't have no problem with your father, why are you mistreating your heavenly father? He with you everywhere you go. But you mistreat him. You ain't talking to him. He put thoughts on your mind telling you to pray. Oh, I'm too tired. He put thoughts on your mind telling you, I want you to study the word. Oh, I don't feel like it. He telling you, you need to go to church. Oh, I can watch church on TV. He telling you, I need you to you know, turn your plate down. Oh, you know, I got to take this medicine. See, that's the problem that you got authority issues. You don't want nobody to tell you what to do. You got father issues. What the baby look like telling her parents, I ain't going to go to school today. I ain't going to eat my food today. I ain't going to make up my bed today. Shame on you that we're trying to beat these children and the daylights out of them, telling you what they ain't going to do, and we tell God the Father all the time. I ain't going to read. 
I ain't going to church. I ain't finna go to prayer. I ain't finna do that. Oh, my body hurt. I can't do that. But let somebody say, do what you want to do. Oh, child, let me go ahead on put these clothes on. Give me five minutes. We'll do that. But you say, oh, I love God. You get around the church for, oh, yeah, hallelujah. How you doing? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Got on your, what would Jesus do? Uh, a bracelet. Got on your cross around your neck. You trying to, God said, you got a form of godliness, but you denying the power. He said, because ain't no power being manifested to let people know that you really, my child. Come on now. Come on now. Let me tell my God the Father. Yeah. Because he let me know. He said, because how y'all treat me, you let me know that you got a problem with your natural father. Yes, yes. He said, and if we're going to heal the relationship, you first going to have to forgive your father. That's right. You're going to have to forgive your father for not being there. You're going to have to forgive your father for not taking you to the prom, not giving you your bike, not giving you your dress, not doing when I, not whatever that you wanted him to do that he did not do. He said, you got to forgive him. Why I got to forgive him? Because I don't went through all these aches and pain. God said, you forgive him because I forgave you. I forgave you for everything you did, everything that you did. It destined that you should go to hell, but because of grace and mercy, I forgave you and I threw your sins away and I put it in the, 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 the seal for forgiveness. So when I look at you, I don't remember what you did. How dare you to try to remind them what they did to you? How dare you to try to remind them you weren't there for my birthday? You weren't there for my wedding? You weren't there for my children? You weren't there for me when I needed you? You weren't there when I called you? When I wanted you there, you didn't answer the phone. He said, but you reminded your natural father of everything that he did, but you forgot what you did. That you went there when I called you. I woke you up at 3 o'clock in the morning and you didn't get up. I told you to go to Bible study. You didn't want to go to Bible study. I told you to get up and read your Bible. You made an excuse. You kept watching TV. You kept talking on the phone. You trying to tell me how to run my relationship with you. But yet you say you love me. You got father issues. We talk about restoring the relationship with the father. He says, so you got to forgive your father. Your natural father. Even though he did not raise you, but he got, his sperm got you here. So tell the Lord, thank you. Thank the Lord. God may not want him to be the one to raise you. God may not want him to be the one to speak into your life. He may not be the best that he could have done for you. But God says, th th tell the Lord, thank you for him so that you can move on. Because a lot of times we try to hold people hostage because we want them to come back and tell them how they messed up. And a lot of times people ain't going to do it. And a lot of times we sit up here waiting on people to come back to us and they will never come back to us. That's why you got to say I choose to forgive you because now I'm taking control over my life. I'm determined that you're no longer going to be an idol for me. You're no longer going to mess up my life. You're no longer going to stop me where I don't trust men because of how you did me. I'm going to say I choose to forgive you so I can move on and I'm not going to look back at what you did. I'm going to move ahead and God said after you forgive him you got to ask God to wash you. Ask him to cleanse you with his blood and say God I ask you to heal me from the residue. Heal my mind. Heal my soul. Heal those bad memories. Heal those demonic triggers even when something would trigger me back to how he treated me. Trigger me back to how he favored my sister over me. He favored my brother over me. God said that you got to ask him to wash and to heal you you because some of us have been upset because our natural fathers failed us and we looked at God and said well if our natural father failed us quite naturally you're going to think that God is going to fail you so I want you to turn your Bibles to Matthew 6 before I teach you about with the father can you turn the music down a little bit so when you look at Matthew 6 I want you to look at verse 5. When you look at verse 5, he says here, this is Jesus talking to the disciples. This is the model that if you're going to have a relationship with God the Father, you got to have a prayer life. Amen. These little two minutes praying before you go to bed. Two minute praying before you walk in the building. There's two minute praying that when something bad happens, now you want to pray. That's not a relationship. Because God is a spirit. He's an invisible force. He's a spirit that lives within your spirit, man. So listen what Jesus said in verse Matthew 6, verse 5. 
He said, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. That word hypocrite is a pretender. He said that you got to stop pretending in front of people. You want to pray these nice prayers. You want to use these big words. But when you get home, you don't have anything to say. He said, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by man. He said, see, you got to understand you got to get healed because your natural father didn't give you no attention. So women, you look for men to give you attention because your natural father didn't give you no attention. He said, we need deliverance because you're looking for this man to make you feel good about yourself. You're making for this man to, you want him to make you feel beautiful. You want this man to make you feel needed. You want this man to make you feel like you gorgeous. When God said, this is an indication. This is why you got so many women want to show their body because they need deliverance because their father did not give them attention. Their father went in the household. So this is why you see women showing titties. This is why you see all these women showing their butt. This is why every dress you got on, we can see your G-string. We can see everybody. We can see the vein. We can see the dimple in your bottom. And that should not be because it's an indication. You still trying to be seen. How do you know? Because I had it. So I ain't trying to judge nobody. Yeah. I'm just I'm saying it because I had the same thing. He said, "This is why I'm trying to show you. You gotta you gotta stop trying to be seen in front of people." He said, "I tell you the truth. They have received their reward in full." So when you got in, all these people looking at you and you got this attention, he said, "You already got your reward." That's right. He said, "But when you pray." Go into your room. Your room means a personal place between you and God. Close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. He's invisible, so it seems like you're in there by yourself. It seems like you're talking to yourself. It seems like you don't have nobody to give you attention. But you got to tell that flesh you got to die because all eyes on me. You got to die because I know that my father is listening to me. See, this is why you got to read the word because the word is going to show you that you ain't in that closet by yourself. He said, then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you openly. He said, we got to stop that whatever that you're doing, I understand that this is a day of social media and sometimes we do a lot of advertising, we do a lot of what we do online, but some people do it just to get seen. Come on, well, we, we evangelize in the hood because we, we know you in the hood. We know you giving these people clothes, but we got to be careful sometimes when we always telling everything that we do. It's something that's sort of shit we don't tell what we do. And sometimes we got to stop putting on the forefront who you giving stuff to. That's right. That's right. Because you didn't like it. That one thing I did not like. If you buy me something, don't wait till you get around a bunch of people then say, I had to get her that dress because it was too little for me. Uh, Why are you waiting until you got in front of all them people and now you don't just told all them people what you just did? That's right. Now you're embarrassing that person. Amen. And so a lot of times people do that to people. You, see, you got some people, they got people throwing up in the trash can and you got the camera on them throwing up. You didn't want nobody to take a picture when you been delivered. So why you got somebody recording these people taking somebody throwing up in the trash can? Some stuff we got to know what not to record. That's right. That's right. That's good. Treat people how you want them to treat you. Because I know when I'm throwing up, I ain't want nobody looking at me with no camera. That's right. Showing that on Facebook. That's right. He said, then your father will, your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans. See, you know another reason why we babble? Why we can't talk to the father? Because we don't know the word. How we again, how can you say that you are his child and you don't know the word or what your father wants to hear? My children know, my natural children know what I want to hear and what I don't want to hear. Even the spiritual people that I oversee, they know what I want to hear and they know what I don't want to hear. They know they tell me if, if, they, if I'm sick this time, I'm going to let it slide. But if you keep telling me, I ain't going to have to say that. They're going to tell me, but well, I got to go ahead and get myself on up because I know what she going to say. And God said, if you are my children, you're supposed to know what I'm going to say. Get the word. It ain't what I'm saying. It's a word. He said here. He said because for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. He said do not be like them. For your father knows what you need before you ask. This then how you should pray. I'm teaching you this is how you pray to the father. Our father in heaven. So 
So he's telling you, I'm not like your natural father. I'm just the father, the invisible father that lives in your mind. Our father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. In other words, I'm reverence your name. I'm not just going to put your name with no everything. I reverence you. I honor you. I respect you. Listen when he said verse 10. Your kingdom come. So in other words, his invisible mindset, the way he see things, for it to come on earth as it is in heaven. Because I know in heaven everything is well. I know in heaven ain't nothing sick. I know in heaven ain't nothing broke. I know in heaven it ain't nobody to pray. So he said, I need you to pray for your kingdom to come. In other words, he said, I need your mindset to see things the way that I see things. I need you to see your marriage already healed. I need you to see your children already delivered. I need you to see it's already worked out on your job. I need you to see that your home is already being built. I need you to see that your cars are already worked out. I need you to see that you already got the job. I need you to already see things the way that I see it. We talking about we know the Father, but we up here begging. Please, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Pay my life bill, Jesus. Oh, do it, Lord. I know you got the money. I know you got the money. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Dad. If God is a spirit, yes, Lord. can you show me in the Bible Come on, where the money came down? <laughs> Deuteronomy 8 and 18 say, I'm going to give you knowledge and power to get wealth. See, now you see how I'm praying something that ain't even biblical. Yeah. Send the money, Jesus. Yeah. Send the money, Jesus. Pay my life bill, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus is going to give you the wisdom. Yeah. Whether or not he tell you to call the people and say, can I make arrangements? Yeah. Or whether or not he going to send somebody by that's going to give you the money. Yeah. He going to work things out and, get, and show you how he going to do it. But he ain't going to come down from heaven to come down on earth to pay your life bill. So you sitting up here around here, man, because I prayed and I ain't seen nothing happen. You sitting up there praying prayers out of your flesh. You're praying earthly prayers. You're not praying kingdom prayers. When you're praying kingdom prayers, you see a thing I never already done. So when I open up my refrigerator, it may look like I ain't no food in the refrigerator. But I look in the refrigerator and I say, God, I thank you for being Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides for me. Lord, if you want to send somebody back, send them. Lord, if you want to cause me to go somewhere to a food bank, show me where to go, Lord. I thank you right now for you making a way out of nowhere. You said that I never seen the righteous forsaken. Lord, it's seen begging, praying. I know that you're a good father. You said if I call upon your name, you won't give me a stone, but you'll give me bread. You'll give me what I ask for. I say thank you, Lord, even though it looks like ain't nothing in my refrigerator, but I won't complain because I know you're a good father. God, I ain't starving. I ain't lost no way. Father, you taking care of me and my children. We got something to eat every day, even though we got to eat sardines, even though we got to eat Roman noodles. Oh, God, I say thank you, Lord. We up here trying to put God in the box. Yeah. Where they eat filet me on. I ain't eat filet me on. I got to eat these noodles. I got right here riding the bus. And they right here driving their car. God said, ain't I'm taking care of you? Ain't you still going to your job? Ain't you still riding? Why you complaining? See, that's an indication that you ain't ready for the blessing. Because you trying to compare your father to somebody else's father. You don't know she may have the hook for that. But you sitting up here talking about she eating filet me on. She got to jump whatever that man tell her to jump. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. He said, I'm coming over. She got to get up. And knowing that she don't feel like it, she got to go to work because she got to get up because that's when he calling her. But God said, you sleeping on your sofa. You sleeping on that floor. He said, but you ain't got to get up. You been to sleep all night long. He said, because I'm taking care of you. And all I need you to do is just come to me because I'm a good father. Yes, he is. Trying to complain. Don't get it twisted because you got so many women that be flexing, baby. Come on, God. Home, look at everybody that slips. Oh, I got this. I got on the Jay Renee's. Oh, I got the best weed. But baby, you got to jump when he tell you to jump. You got to take his abuse. You got to take his craziness. You got to go through all this stuff. I'd rather be at home by myself. Got a peace of mind. Eat what I want to eat. Don't nobody have to tell me to do nothing. But serve my God. I ain't going to let you make me think. You got it better than me. See, you listen to these folks telling you that they got it better than you. They got to do all kind of flips and hips. You're looking at a five-minute outfit. Don't know what that woman had to go through to get what she got. Yeah, yeah, my God. My God. 
don't get it twisted. Come on here. Lord, play. He said, I need you to pray. Your kingdom come. He said, I need your mind to change. I need your mind to be transformed. I need your mind to see things the way that I see it. I need your mind to change. He said, pray your kingdom come. Your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. He said, I'm such a good father, Elder Mark, that I'm going to give you daily bread every day. I'm going to give you a word of knowledge every day. I'm going to give you some answers what to do every day. So when you sleep and you get up in the morning, I'm going to tell you to get up and go do this. When you sleep, I'm going to tell you, go get the people on that election. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to get up and you get up in the morning. I'm going to tell you, go down the street. Go to the piggly wiggler. I'm going to tell you different things to do every day because I'm a good father that will feed my children. See, church folk will have a looking at where, oh, where my house at, where my car, baby. I'm getting a word every day. How many words can you get? Because, see, when you don't get a word from a father, you got to go look at a prophet. Prophet, what you got for me? What you got for me, prophet? What you got for me? Then you get teed off because don't nobody give you a word. Then you get teed off because then they call the $100 line. You ain't got nothing but $25. So now you can't stand in the line and they can't give you no word. Now you get mad. Now you get mad at God because you don't touch your eyes off of God and you put your eyes on man. And God said, I'm trying to teach you that I want a relationship with you, but you're trying to have a relationship with man. I ain't got no heaven or hell to put you in. I can't heal you. I can't deliver you. It's my job to take you to the Father. It's my job to show you who the Father is. You got all these cheap people. They've been saved for 30 years and don't even know that the Father lives inside of you. You're up here looking at the preacher, not understanding. If you had a prayer life on your own, you're going to understand what God told you in prayer. He's going to reveal to the preacher to let you know you're in the right place. But you got some people don't have no prayer life, so you're looking at everything what the preacher's saying as if it's gold. Yes. Now God said the days out for them superstars. Amen. He said because I'm going to deal with these prophetic Amen. junkies. You know the preacher. You know what they say. You know what they like, but you don't know me. He said I'm talking to you, but you don't hear what I'm telling you. I'm telling you to stay home and go on a sabbatical. I'm telling you to stay home and get on your face. But you tell me because I got to go with evangelist. I got to go with prophet. I got to go with the apostle. But God said you ain't heard me when I say stay home. He said you ain't heard me when I said don't turn on Facebook. You ain't heard me when I told you don't turn on YouTube. You ain't heard me when I told you I want you to hear my voice and I need you to cut off all these other voices. He said you ain't heard me, but you guys, but they are speaking louder than my voice. You have made them your God and not me. I got a problem with you and your jealous God. He said, I got a problem with these idols. We have made people, we have made preachers idols. And the preacher don't got to the place where we only want to, it ain't my, it ain't my job to be your Holy Ghost. It's my job to show you who he is. It ain't my job for you to pimp me. It ain't my job. It's my job for you. Oh, a pastor ain't helping me now. Come when you tell me you need prayer, the uh, first thing I'm gonna ask you, what scripture you standing on? Come on, pastor. Come on now. Don't come telling me that you want me to pray for you, but you ain't standing on no scripture. You know what you're telling me? You're trying to use me. And you got some of these preachers, but they just gave me a couple dollars. No, 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 no. I don't care what you give me. I'm still going to take you back to the Word. Because I'm trying to tell you, if you don't give me your money, if you don't want to hear the truth, keep your money. Because I'm going to tell you the truth. Elisa means truth. So when you say, oh, Pastor Elisa, you say, I want truth. That's what it means. Don't call me if you don't want the truth. Don't call me if you don't want to hear what God is saying. Don't call me if you want to be lazy. You want to be sucking on the press. I'm not your word. I'm not the pastor for you. This is for the one who's ready to walk. Put on your big girl drawers. Put on your big boy drawers. And this is where you're going to have to take it like a woman. You want to take it like a man. Because I'm going to tell you, turn down your plate. Don't tell me about your diabetes. Don't tell me about this. Because I'm going to tell you, you got to turn down that plate. We're talking about restoring the relationship with the Father. He said, so, 
Give us our daily bread. He said, because I'm giving you food. I'm giving you word every day. He said, so that's going to be an indication that your relationship is being restored. You got to go back to a place of prayer every day. And every day he's going to give you a different, a different scripture in the Bible. He's going to give you a different verse. He's going to speak to you in your mind. You're going to wake up with a song in your heart. You're going to wake up. You may look at TV and he may say, just trust me. You may be reading your Bible and search scripture going to come out the Bible. Because that's Father giving you your daily Pray. He's feeding his children. Verse 12 says, forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. Don't ask God to forgive you and you know you don't want to forgive nobody. See, this is the Lord's prayer. You got to be forgiving other people just like how he forgave you. He said, and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Stop thinking that God is tempting you. The Bible says man is tempted by his own lust. You got to understand when I had a problem with lust, I looked for attention from man because that was an issue that was in me. And God had to show me that this is a problem that I got with you. This is a problem that you got to be delivered. You got to stop running from the truth. You got to stop running from yourself. I don't care where you go. You're going to always deal with you. You may come in contact with different people but you're going to meet your same you because you have not changed. That's right. That's right. That's good. Verse 14. He said, but if you forgive, look why he coming back with forgiveness again. Okay, okay, okay. He said, but if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not, if you do not, if you do not forgive men, your father will not forgive your sins. So that right, that's going to deal with us right there. That's right. He didn't say, no matter how hard it is, that's right. forgiveness is not for them. Forgiveness is for you. That's right. That's right. Forgiveness stops you from going forward. That's right. That's right. Forgiveness, unforgiveness stops you from uh, growing in God. Mm -hmm. Unforgiveness, it causes you to separate from him. That's good. That's good. So when you having these people in your heart, mm -hmm. I just can't let it go. I just can't let it go. You telling God, this person is big enough for me to separate myself from you. Come on now. Come on now. Ain't nobody that bad. That's right. That's right. That I got to separate myself from God. That's right. Because I want to keep them in my heart. All right. All right. I want to keep them in my mind. Because God said, we don't got so used to it. We want to idolize people. God said, you don't, you, for somebody, he said, you've been in a relationship for five years. You've been broken up for five years. And you still talking about you hurt from them. You still hurt because you don't want to move on. You making them your idol. Every time you see them, you get sad. Every time you see them, you start talking about it as if it happened yesterday. You have made that person your God. And God said, I got a problem with you. He said, I woke you up this morning, not them. I don't want to take care of you, not them. So why are you giving all the glory to them? We give people glory and honor when you keep talking about the same broken record. Over and over and over. God said, I'm talking, I'm looking for people that want to restore the relationship with me. Amen. Amen. Not relationship with the other people. Amen. So I want you to turn your Bibles to Genesis 1. When you look at Genesis 1, we got to begin to understand that God is a spirit, right? Are we all clear? Amen. God is a spirit. Because I want to show you the pattern of God. So when you look at Genesis 1, we're going to start in the verse 1. He said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God is a spirit. He's an unseen force. He created the heaven and the earth. It says, and the earth was formed. The earth was without void. And darkness was upon the, the face of the earth. And the spirit, underline spirit. A spirit is something that you cannot see. And the spirit of God, it moved on the face of the waters. And God said, how can a spirit say? How can a spirit speak? God thought in his mind. So you got to understand if God is a spirit, he did not have a mouth. He did not have no ears. He thought it and it happened. So God is showing us the pattern. If you're going to be my children, look at this. It says God thought. Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning was the first day. Verse 6, and God thought, let there be a ferment in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. God made the ferment and divided the waters, which was under the ferment, which the waters above, which was were above the ferment, and it was so. Verse 8, and God called the ferment heaven, and the evening and the morning was the second day. Verse 9, and God thought, let the waters under the heavens be gathered. So in other words, God say, if you're going to have a relationship with me, i got to deal with your mind. Amen, amen. You can't put all this mess in your mind and think that 
you going to hear what God is saying? Come on now, come on. Do you not know the devil will fight you evangelist for a word? That's right, that's right. The Bible says Daniel had to fast elder for 40 days to hear a word. Come on now, Pastor. Come on now. But see, now we living in a day where people don't understand that they serving the devil. You know why? I'm tired of this preaching. I don't want to hear this preaching. Whenever I'm going through, you want to give me a word. Whenever you talk, you want to give me a word. Whenever you feel like you, I don't want to hear this word. I'm tired of this word. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. So what God, what king are you listening to if you don't want to hear a word? Ooh, Jesus. Because if God is a word, uh -huh. and I'm giving you the word, uh -huh. but you tell me you don't want to hear the word, you telling me you got an allegiance to this worldly kingdom That's and right. not the spiritual kingdom. That's right, another kingdom. That's right. That's right, another kingdom. See how people serving the devil don't realize it. Mm -hmm. Because see, he's letting us know I gotta deal with your thoughts because I live in your spirit man. Amen. So if God lives in your spirit man, let's jump down to verse 12. And God brought forth grass and herb and yearly seed. After his kind, in yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. This is another thing about the Father. He let you know everything God produced is in a seed form. Amen. So the words that you speak, if you say, I'm the heel of the Lord, it's in a seed. Uh -huh. So if I got an apple seed, how am I going to make that seed grow? I got to put the seed in some dirt. What is the dirt? Darkness. It looks dark. I got to put it in the ground. That's right. That's right. I got to put it to be buried. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So I got a powerful word today at church. What you going to do with the word? Jesus. The word got to be put in the ground. Yes. Come on here. It got to look like what he said ain't going to happen. Come on now. Come it got to look like it because I'm burying it in the ground and I got to water it. I got to put it in some sun. I got to put some water in it. I got to put some fertilizer in it. So God said when you get that word, you got to walk over it. You got to pray over it. You got to worship. You got to give him glory. You got to say, God, I thank you for my seed. I thank you for my breakthrough. What are you doing? You are watering your seed because he gave you your breakthrough. Eventually, you got your car in the seed. You got your house in the seed. You got your husband in the seed. You got it in the seed, but it's show job to make it grow. But see, we so caught in the mind, we reject the sea. Oh, Jesus. We reject the elder. Oh, Lord. Because I don't see no sea. Oh, Jesus. You just gave me a prophetic word. Oh, Jesus. The prophetic word was the sea. Come on, Pastor. I don't pray with two days and I don't see nothing yet. Uh -huh. Well, you show me what seed you plant uh -huh. in two plain. days. Make it plain. And it just come up. You plant flowers and they come back what? In the spring. In the spring. You plant them when? Some people plant them in the fall so that it come in the spring. So you mean it's going to take three months for these seeds to come up. Amen. So why are we tripping? Because I say I plant the word, but I want my stuff to come up today. Yeah. Like Father trying to show you that you're trying to bring your worldly thinking uh -huh. into his kingdom. Into his kingdom. That's right. Father. I can't tell the people in England, this is how you run your kingdom. I'm not that queen. Right. I'm not that king. Right. So how you going to tell God, I prayed about it today and I don't see no breakthrough yet. I've been worn over and I ain't heard you say nothing yet. How dare you talk to God the Father like that? You showing you're disrespectful. You showing that you have no, you have no reverence for authority. What you say? The reason they can disrespect a man and woman of God because they disrespect their mother and father. That's right. That's right. I don't expect you to respect me if you can't respect your mom and your dad. Come on, Pastor. Come on now. Then you wonder why your children don't listen to you. They don't listen to you because you don't respect authority. So therefore, your children can't be obedient to you when you don't be obedient to God. That's right. That's right. That's right. So God said, you got to understand, he's trying to teach us in Genesis. Everything is in a seed form. And you got to bury it. You got to bury it. You got to plant it. Home Depot alone, they sell the plants. It's up to you yeah. to plant it. Amen. I'm giving you the word. It's up to you to plant it. Don't get mad at me and say the prophecy didn't come forth. See, that's what's wrong with us. We don't even know about prophecy. Yeah, I spoke the word and you want to call me a false prophet. No, you got to understand you got to live right for the prophecy. You got to understand you got to walk over the prophecy. You got to begin to tell the Lord, I'm standing on this prophecy. I'm walking on this prophecy. I will not let you go until you bless me. You got to live right for this prophecy. You living like the devil doing all kind of stuff. It's going to tell my day I'm a false prophet. No, you 
you want to sit up here and call people false prophets because the word didn't come to pass. It didn't come to pass because you weren't doing right. It's time for us preachers to start telling these folks yeah. what the prophetic word is. I know that's right. Ooh, Jesus. They don't even know the difference between the prophet. You think you're a prophet because you can prophesy. The Bible says I desire that you all prophesy. We're supposed to teach the usher how to prophesy. Right. We're supposed to teach the children how to prophesy. You think you're so special because you can prophesy and you get jealous of somebody else because they prophesy. Baby, you just got the gift. You ain't walking in the office. Because when you walk in the office, you can handle correction. Don't try to correct me when you don't even listen to the Father. What you say? You listen to another God. You listen to another king. Jesus. Jesus. Come on, I'm a prophet. You can't even submit yourself. You can't even sit down in the house and be taught. How can you leave when you can't be taught? How can you leave when you don't know how to follow? Got saved yesterday and now you're talking about the Lord. I'm calling you to be an apostle. That don't make sense. God got to develop us to teach us how to be obedient children. I don't know no parent for to get the children the keys to their house and they don't do right. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Mm -hmm. That children be grown. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> right. Not going to do it. Amen. So what makes you think God loves you so much he's going to give it to you anyway? No, he's not. He's not going to give it to you. And you got some of these people lying to folk telling him, God going to do it. God going to move heaven and earth to give it to you. No, he ain't. No, he ain't. You rebellious and you disobedient. God ain't going to move heaven and earth to give you nothing. You better teach these people the laws of the kingdom and let them know how to come back to the Father. That's what's wrong. He said, I'm coming back for a bride. You got to understand. You got to hear God talking to you. You may see me two times a week. You may see me three times a week. But baby, God is talking to you every day. Something is wrong and you only hear God when you're talking to me. God lives within you. Yeah. The kingdom is within you. He should be talking to you every day. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Oh Jesus. And that's what's wrong. He said because the people don't understand the laws of the spirit. I teach on the spirit because God showed me in the body of Christ we have not taught the people. It's not here, not everybody, but as a majority, the people don't know the spiritual laws. That's right. I was a minister and didn't know the spiritual law. Come on, Apostle. Come on now. Because we were taught to, to please the flesh. That's right. That's right. That's right. And the people didn't know God. Mm -hmm. God in the room. And I'm going to be looking around like this. Not knowing he in my mind. That's right. So if he in my mind, but you got folk around here looking for God to come out the sky, to come out the wall, because we never taught them that it was in their mind. Now understand the king, the king, he want a relationship with you. Yeah. See, see, we got to understand this. Hear this. See, everything that we know is coming from the world, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What we learn from our parents, what we learn from school, what we learn from college, all of it comes from another filter, another human being. That's good. Uh -huh. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But spiritual things, elder, it don't come from another human being. As I got up this morning in prayer, God was birthing some stuff that came from my inside to release out. It was never said from another human being, Elder. Because uh -huh. he told it to me. And then it came out of me to come on the earth. And God said, my people don't know. They don't know how to sit there and let me talk to them to birth things from the inside out. Jesus. Everything that we've been getting, Elder, it comes from another human being. Come on, Apostle. But when you got a connection with the Father, uh -huh. He's talking to you, His Spirit talking to your spirit and birthing you into another place in Him. Amen. No human being never touched you to get that. You got that being pulled from the from the inside out. Jesus. And He said, You got a bunch of people in church and they never talk to the Father. They don't know his, they don't even know what he sound like. Yeah. They don't even know that he's talking to them. Stay right because they was never taught that God lives within them and he wanna come out. Jesus, Jesus. Woo. Yeah. Hey. He wanna, he said, I wanna come out. Hey, no, no. You wanna give me a shout, you wanna give me a dance, hey. but I wanna come out. Hey, no, 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 no. Yeah, 
gonna show you something. Cause listen, these are the signs that will let you know that God is coming out. Look at verse 24. When you look at verse 24, look what he said. This is one. Sorry, 24. Look at verse 24. And God thought, let the earth bring forth the living creatures after its kind. See, he's telling you. He's I'm a God of kind. In other words, I want a cow with another cow. I want a duck with another duck. I want a fish with another fish. I don't want a dog and a snake to come together. I want two of the same kind. That's right. That's right. He says, I produce a coin. And he bringing forth living creatures after his kind. And creeping things and beasts on the earth after his kind. And it was so. God made the beasts of the earth after his kind. And the cattle after his kind. And everything that creep upon the earth after his kind. God saw that it was good. See, God think it's good. He don't want us to be with nobody. They, you good and they ain't no good. See, that's not, a, that's not according to the kind. Do you not know marriage is supposed to display God? Yeah, it's supposed to look like what it looks like on heaven. Amen. But when we say, I just want to get married because I want some sex. You want God just for five minutes? I mean, you want to be with somebody for five minutes and you're supposed to be displaying heaven on earth. Hear me in the realm of the, hear me in the spirit realm. Don't you let no five minutes make you do something that's going to destroy your life. Amen. Don't let you get into something for some five minutes that's going to rock your boat and you forget who God is. Amen. Because if your job is, if you marry and when a man and a woman come together, it's their job to display who God is. If you're not displaying what God is on earth, you got to understand it's not according to his kind. That's good, Apostle. Look at this. Verse 20, verse 26. And God said, it is, let us make man in our image. Image is what you see. See, God don't see no sickness. God see healing. Uh -huh. God don't see poor. God see wealthy. Amen. He said, God said, I made man according in my own image. After my likeness. Likeness means that you do what God do. So when God thought something, it manifested. He said, so when you think something, that's what the Bible says, so the man thinking in his heart, so is he. So when you feel like you're sick, you got to be sick because that's what you thought. But God said, you got to understand, you got me on the inside of you. When you start changing your thought process, you got the capabilities to change your DNA. Here it is. Your brain don't know the difference between what's a cartoon and what's real. So whatever's put before your eyes, your brain will believe it and your brain want to rehearse it. So if I see a dog and I say, Ow! I start screaming. You know what my brain want to tell me? Every time I see a dog, Ow! every time I see a dog, Ow! my brain want to duplicate what's the image that it saw. And God said, I'm trying to tell you when you put my word in your mind, I'm trying to create a new image in you. So when you see sickness, you say, I'm here. When my back hurt, I'm here. My leg hurt, I'm here. The doctor say this, I'm here. The doctor say, this ain't gonna, this is, uh, this is permanent. This can't be reversed. Well, God say, I'm here. He's trying to put a new image in you. So when you look at this, look what he said here. He said, God said, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fire of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth and every creeping thing that creep on the earth. What does thus dominion mean? Dominion means that he gave you power in your mind that that thing is not supposed to influence you, but you influence it. I was walking and this dog about this big was walking. And the Holy Ghost said, don't be afraid. I gave you authority over the dog. And so I looked at the dog. I said, God did not give it to me to fear, but a little power that was inside mine. The dog looked at me, and the dog turned around. Wow. <laughs> he showed me how to walk and how to have the image of him. But the flesh part of me, Elisa, don't like dogs. And with a rain and yell. Uh -huh. But the kingdom mindset is trying to teach me how to re-image uh -huh. what I see. So if I see something chaotic, it's my job to speak to the chaos uh -huh. and say, I, I don't agree with this. Amen. Amen. Even though it is real what I see. Uh -huh. But it's my job. 
to put the image of what the father says about my situation. It's not, hear me, it's not that I'm walking in a, what people say, that, that's just pretend. No, 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 no. I'm walking according to the kingdom. See, you don't understand the kingdom because you still got the mindset of the world. You know, people, here you go, naming and claiming. Listen, this is how my kingdom is reigning. The kingdom that I'm connected to, yes. this is how we talk. Yes. Amen. Amen. You ain't going trying to teach them, teach them people who, who speak Spanish. You ain't trying to tell them, that ain't how you do it. Do it like this. You going to comply to what they say. That's right. That's right. So how come when we in the kingdom of God, you trying to tell God how to run his kingdom? Ah. Glory. I hear the Holy Ghost. He said, we got to stop telling y'all to come to church and the Lord going to bless you. You come to church so you can learn how to operate in the kingdom. That's what church is for. Stop thinking that you just going to get blessed because you come to church. Coming to church is teaching you how to operate with this new mind you got. That's why the Bible says when you are in Christ Jesus, you are a new creation. We trying to be new because we got on some new clothes and a new weave. Come on, Pastor. You ain't new. That's right. Your mindset's still the same. Mm -hmm. Elder, you still in the promised land, but you still in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause we still will still hurt. Oh Lord Jesus, what's going on, Lord? Why I go love? Why? What did I do? What did I do? He tried to show you. Yeah. I'm trying to get something to you. Then we got in worship. I'm available to you, Lord. Whatever you whatever you want me to do, use me, Lord. Okay, he said, I'm going to use you to go through this trial. Amen, because it's coming. <laughs> but we streaming at the trial, but you just told him in, earth, in, in worship to use you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, I use you by how you respond. Do you not know we've been failing because we've been responding at the test with our thinking the wrong way? You thought because you heard the word, you thought that was it. What am I saying? So when I start talking crazy to my friend, child, I'm tired of going through all this stuff. Uh, all this stuff, it, it just don't make no sense to me. I take one step forward, I take two steps back. By what I just told her, I have just hindered everything what God just did. Jesus, Jesus. You know why? Because I'm painting another image. Jesus. What you focus on, that's the image you're going to get. So if I'm steady telling her, I can't do it, it's too hard, it's just too much, this the image I'm going to get. Because this is what I'm telling her. But if I'm telling her, girl, I don't care what it looks like, I'm going to pass this test. I don't care how hard it looks like, I'm going to walk through this. If I got to cry, I'm going to still quote this scripture. If I got to get on my knees and scream, I'm still going to do it. Because why? I'm, I'm re-imaging my mind. Because where do God live? In my mind. You see what I'm saying? And he's trying to show us we've been rehearsing the dysfunction. But we've been failing. In our thinking, because he then now I'm gonna cuss you out. So now I just fail the test again. Jesus. Because now by me cussing, because where do God live? In my mind. Uh -huh. So if I'm talking crazy, I'm drawing demonic spirits, and they're gonna come to me, and it's their job to, to do what I spoke, because I have given them a legal access to do what they want to do in my house. I'm tired of this. I take one step forward, I take two steps back. So he said, Come on, step back. She just said what she said, come on. I feel like I'm about to lose my mind. Come on, and say She just gave you access. I feel like I'm about to have a nervous breakdown. Come on, panic. Come on, anxiety. Come on, she just said it. Because when you're in the kingdom of God, it's voice activated. Your voice activate God to show up, or your voice will act activate demons to show up. Now, how long are you going to keep cursing yourself? Mm. Talking about people cursing you head, and you curse your own self. Amen. <laughs> You doing it. That's right. That's right. You ain't got that good to say. Be quiet. We almost there. He's showing us you're supposed to have power over these situations. He said you shouldn't give another person, you shouldn't give another person authority to make you say stuff. Still working on that one. You know how sometimes people match that right. They know how to match that button. And we say some stuff. He said, you still giving them authority. You still giving them the power to control you. He said, I gave you dominion. Why are you letting another human being to pull you out of me? 
Why you let another person make you forfeit the promise what God has given you because they said something that hurt your feelings? He said, you got to look at it like this. If they said something to make you mad, you got to tell that devil, that ain't me. Amen. You see, you got to tell yourself, oh, that ain't me. Mm -hmm. They trying to make you mad because when you get mad, you are agreeing to what they said. Mm -hmm. So if they tried to belittle you, what they did, you agreeing with the belittlement because you got mad about it. Yeah. See what I'm saying? But he said, but when you ain't agreeing about it, you say, oh, oh okay, I don't know who you talking to. Mm -hmm. Oh, you ain't talking to me because that, that, that ain't me. See, that's where the power comes from. Because the power comes from in your thinking to make you don't respond to what how people want you to do. You know, because sometimes the devil, they watch you. He got monitor spirits that will watch you to see if that's going to hit below the belt that's going to make you mad. Jesus, Jesus. And God said that's why you got to get in prayer so he can fortify you when people try to get you upset to make you say some stuff. We got to stop leaving the, the, the seated places in heaven to come down to fight with a little demon when God said, I call you up here. I call you to an elevated place, but you trying to prove a point to a little demon. In other words, you trying to mess with a little private, and here you is up here. And you coming down the throne. Let me just deal with this joke. No, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to let them be sitting up there asking a fool because they're going to feel like a fool. They're doing all that, and you ain't saying nothing. We don't do that. So he's letting us know when you know your father, you know how to act. You walk in dominion. And look what he said right here. He said here, he said, so God created male and female. God created man in his own image. In the image God created male and female. He said, I gave it to man and I gave it to woman. God blessed them. And God said, be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, over every living creeping thing that move upon the earth. So in other words, God said, when you pass these tests, that's how you multiply in other words, when you stop saying this crazy stuff and you know how to keep your mouth closed, that's how you get the blessing. That's how you multiply. Yeah, this was a sailor moment. <laughs> See, we've been arguing. We've been going back. And he said, that's why you can't multiply yet. You can't multiply because you're going back and, back and forth with the devil. You're going to go back and forth with the word, not the person. See, we're trying to fight the person. And God said, you're going to deal with... What's the first thing I gave you in Matthew 6? Pray. You're supposed to deal with that spirit in that person in prayer. So when you see them in the natural, hey, how you doing? You ain't bother me no more. That's right. You ain't for the activate me no more because I don't get with you early this morning in prayer. See, but when we see them, yeah. no, you didn't say that to me. Oh, I'm going to let you have it. Oh, I got to show you I ain't no problem. I got to show you, oh, you don't want none of this. See, now I'm trying to prove a point to the person in the flesh. Now, I don't just kill everything that I just did this morning in prayer. You don't got up early this morning, said all that stuff. Now you just kill it in five minutes. You prayed an hour, but you just killed it in two minutes. Because now you arguing with another person. When God said you dealt with the spirit this morning. You may say, well, if I dealt with the spirit, why God let me see the person? Because he won't see you pass the test in the natural. That's right. That's you got to understand, if you're going to be in the spiritual realm, it got to take place in the nap in the spirit realm first, then the natural. I got to win the battle in the spirit, then deal with it in the natural. Uh -huh. So I dealt with it in prayer, so now it's time for me to walk. Uh -huh. So now I can't move other than what I said in prayer. So now when I'm doing a different strategy, when I'm doing something different from what I did in prayer, I have lost the battle. And God said, I'm trying to show you it's through your words, it's through your arguing, through your fussing, through your cussing, through your thinking, what you're thinking in your mind. What's wrong? God already told you to heal the Lord. God, I don't feel like I'm healed. God, it don't look like I'm healed. God, did I didn't say I'm healed. What's wrong, God? What's wrong with me? Why you didn't hear me? God said, you ain't walking as a believer. You ain't walking as my child. Didn't I give you the pattern? It said God thought, then it happened. So if you thinking that you heal, healing got to manifest. But if you thought it in your mind and you said it in prayer, I'm the heal, but then now my back hurt. I'm back sick again. You just broke the law. And God saying you can't you can't manifest healing yet until you start matching what you're doing in prayer and manifesting it 
in your life. See, because when you was in prayer, you was in the heavenly realm. Now you got to get up and live on this earth. Now you got to walk out what you just did in prayer. And so we have left it. We left God because we're doing one thing in prayer and we're doing another thing in our natural life. That's why he said the kingdom got to come to your mind. So you understand the revelation. See, this going to cause you right here. It ain't no, who do it, Jesus? Do it, Jesus? No, I'm dealing with your thought. You got to change the way that you think it. I know this. I, I, I know that this is pushing us right here. See, that's how you're going to grow. I'm interested in you growing. Let's look at Genesis 2. I'm going to give you five more minutes. Genesis 2. Come on, got to stretch. Genesis 2. When you look at Genesis 2, God is a spirit, right? So when you look at Genesis 2, let's look at verse 7. He said, then the Lord God, telling you, this is the Lord is Yahweh. This is, this, this is Yahweh. This is the one, the created one. See, God got, different, God got many different facets to him. He said he formed man from the dust, from the ground. So in other words, if you are a child of God, you got to form things from nothing to make something. I was just looking at the tablet, mother. God, he spoke so at a shield. I had it on my tablet when he first told it to me in prayer. I was a minister then. So you're going to have a church? And it was called Sword and Shield Ministry. I spoke at first. Now I'm actually looking at what I spoke. Come on, Pastor. Come on now. Say that back. God said you've been giving birth to things that are illegitimate. Jesus. If you got something and you have not asked God for it, it's illegitimate. Jesus. In other words, don't you go get that car you ain't talk to God about. It. That's right. Don't you go get that house you ain't talk to God about. It. That's right. Don't you marry nobody and you have not talked to God about it. Because if not, it's illegal. And so when it's, if it gives you hell, it's because you went to another king and asked them for it before you asked God. God said, I'm your father. Because in the natural, what do men of God do? They're going to go and ask that girl, father, can I have your daughter hand in marriage? Isn't that what another man of God will do? That's right. But I'm illegal if I'm telling your child, don't talk to your mama. Let's go do this. It's illegal. Come on, Father. You're effing us now. And God said, I'm trying to show you, you giving birth to strange fire. Oh, Jesus. How you got some power and you know you're drinking, you're partying, you're sleeping around, you're sleeping, you're dipping, you ain't eating no word, you ain't praying, you ain't fasting. So, Mother, can I ask, who's in you? That's right. Evangelist. Where's this power coming from? That's right. Come on now. Because my Bible tells me I got to live right. That's right. That's my Bible right. tells me I got to pray in faith. Got to. So if I'm getting prophetic words and I'm sleeping around, I'm going up here doing whatever I want to do, but I'm telling you what thus says the Lord, oh the filter of my mind is dirty. Yeah. How in the world I'm going to give you a clean and a holy word when my mind is dirty? Exactly. I can't. It's coming from a strange source. That's right. Oh, you just don't know a pop. They can tell you your check number. Oh, they can tell you. No, I'm scared of that. I'm scared of it. I'm sitting up here. They got this women and they got this women and they doing all this right here. I'm sorry. I don't want them kind of words. Because you get the wrong word. That's it. I don't need you telling my checkbook. Because when I get in prayer, God going to confirm to me what I've been praying. When I get a prophetic word, the prophetic word going to be a confirmation what God already told you. That's right. That's right. Stay right there. That's but you got people, they want the prophetic word to tell them something that they ain't even consulted God about. I know that's right. And so now you got a lot of people, they prophesying to your flesh. Uh -huh. yes, I know one time somebody, I, that one of them denialists first came out when we was at church. And I wanted to do a denialist so bad. And we was at church, and that pastor said, oh, it's that red denial. It's all on you. It's all on you. It's all on you. And I kept kidding my husband. I said, you see, he said, he said something. He said something. So we got home from church. My husband said, do we got all this money to overflow? He said, no. Can we really afford the denial? I said, no. He said, now, is that word from the Lord? That prophet was giving me a, 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 a prophecy on my flesh. Come on, Father. Come on now. Now, what if I would have rented out that car? That's right. We was already struggling. Right, right. 
Now I'm finna struggle some more because the man told me that and I thought because it was a man of God. You don't think men and women can go into a, a, a familiar spirit and tell you what you want? Yes, yes they can. Yes, they can. Matter of fact, that's what a lot of them do. That's why they can tell you you got on red drawers, you got on a black bra, and you, whoa, they real, they real. Why do somebody got to tell you something that you already know in your flesh? Yes, come on now, Holy Ghost. Come on now, come on. Oh See, the reason why people want to hear them kind of prophecy because they don't want to hear the truth. That's right. Just tell me what sounds good to my flesh that I don't have to live right. I don't have to pray. I don't have to change. But I still can get the blessing. Well, you go ahead on because everything going to catch you. If it don't come from God, it's going to give you headache. That's right. That's right. That's right. So that's what God was trying to show. So in other words, it said right here, then God, so in other words, you got the power to make something out of nothing. That's what a, a child of God is. So when God told you, I want you to have a women ministry, don't no women follow me yet. Don't, th that's what it's about to look like. He got to cultivate you so that you can get from point A to point B. Amen, amen. See, God don't gave you the prayer. You, this is where you at now. But the process of here, you're going to be a women, uh, you're going to have a strong, powerful women ministry. And you may say, how am I going to do this? You got to go through the process. You see how it's a big gap right here? You're going to mess up. You're going to have all kind of stuff going to go through this space to get you to over here. Amen. Amen. Because he's going to show you how to draw women. He's going to let you go through some things so that because the same thing that you go through, those are going to be the women you're going to draw to. Amen. Amen. See, he's teaching you through this phase that he can show you how to go through to be able to be this person that's going to do all this stuff he promised you. But we thought he just going to pick me up out of here and I'm going to skip all of this and I'm going to do all of this. Uh-uh. Amen. Amen. Being a child of God, you're going to have to go through the process. Amen. Amen. So in other words, when it says here, and God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. When God blew into the dust, you got to understand what did that dust I mean, when he blew into the dust, what was in the breath of God? It was the, the Nasham. It was the force of God. It was the power of God, the ability of God that would think something and make it manifest on the natural. It was the power of God that can speak to something that's dead and to make it come alive. It was the power to speak to something that's alive to make this thing become dead. All the capabilities that was in God in Genesis is in you. Whether or not you choose to live for God or not. As long as you got breath into your body. Yes, come on now. You got the wind of God in you. So when you begin to recognize you got this mysterious power. Mysterious means unknown, not spooky. That's right. But it's, it's mysterious that when you talk to him, when you pray to him, you feel his spirit come upon you. Yes, yes. You begin to feel him, he can wrap his arm around you. Yes. You'll feel the coolness of his presence. Yes, yes. You can feel his heat, the fire. You will feel it in your body because he lives on the inside of you. So when he blew into man, he didn't necessarily blow into the body yet. He blew into his mind and his mind came alive. God said, I need your mind to come alive. I need your mind to come alive when you read my word. I need your mind to come alive to know I'm alive. The Bible says my word is sharper than a two-edged sword. Just speak my word. When you pray my word, when you talk to me, you're going to see the power will manifest. When you speak my word, you may be feeling bad, but you start speaking my word, you're going to feel my power manifest. So then now things that was messing with you, things that was hindering you, you're going to feel it lift up off of you because my spirit is residing on the inside of you. I'm trying to talk to you about the Father. I don't know about you, but I know how I felt about my mama. Come on here. He ain't let nobody come in between me and my mom. Yes, yes. Now, how many people you let come between you and your God? Come on, Apostle. How many people you let come between you and your Father? Come on, come on how many
many people you allow to stop you from reading about your father? How many people you allow that you don't even have time to talk to your father because you talking to them? How many times you let people, they got more voice in your mind than the father got in you? How many times we have let situations and circumstances separate us from the father? It's a relationship with the father. God said, we don't even want to sit and be by ourselves, y'all. Jesus. How come when you sit by yourself, mother, why you always got to have some music? <laughs> he dealt with me about that. He said, I want you by myself. I don't want no music. I don't want the radio. I don't want the TV. Let it be quiet, just me and you. Because I want you to hear what I want to say to you. I want to talk to you face to face. I don't want to hear none of this other stuff. He said, you got to hear this music. They got to love me. Oh, God, I love you. He said, you, you so used to, we got to pump up. Somebody got to pump us into his presence. Do you not know you was created for him? It's your father. It's your God. Nobody should have to pump you up. Nobody should have to make you praise him. Nobody should have to make you open up your mouth. How come you at home, you ain't got nothing to say? Jesus. Just like you in church, elder, the presence should come in your house at church. I mean, at home. Amen. Like how it is at church. Amen. Amen. Your room, where you see, my room is where I do my praying at home. I get on the floor because I say, I, I, I ain't nothing. Yeah. I ain't nothing. I'm going to sit down because yeah. I'm not ain't nothing without yeah. you. Because I want to let them know I, I get down low. Yeah. I say, because I want to let you know I need yeah. you. I want you to know I ain't no pastor. Yeah. I ain't nothing. Yeah. I need you to help me. Yeah. Help my Show me how to love you. Show me how to hear your voice. Show me. God, I need you to show me, Lord. Deal with my mind. Deal with my emotions. Deal with my feelings. I need to hear your voice. Speak loud. For your servant is listening. Speak loud. I'm going to stay right here until you bless me. I'm going to stay right here until you say. See, a lot of times we don't know how this kind of prayer here. Because you got to wait on it. The Bible, old people tell you got to wait. Yeah, you're getting prayer. Y'all see them old ladies. They went to rocking. See, the young generation don't know how to rock. You got to rock with them. You just started crying. Tears rolling down your face. You don't know why you crying. You just said, Lord, you're so good to me. You're so good. You ain't got a dime in your pocket. But you said, Lord, you're a good car. God, you take care of me. You get around. You say, Lord, I can heal. He begin to show you the little things. Oh, God, I got food. I got food on the table. Oh, God, I can feel my aches and pains. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord. My heart ain't so hot that I can still feel what it's like to get hurt. Oh, God, I say thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. See, we don't know about this. See, God, I'm talking to a people that you know that I'm your father. That you got to come down. You got to lower yourself. Because you think that you got the nice house. You think that you drive a Mercedes in the BMW. So you don't got it twisted. You a child. He say, humble yourself. Up under my mighty hand. You got to know that I'm your God. If I'm your God, you got to act like it. When he's your father, you come. He tell you to get up, you get up. He tell you to pray, you better get up and pray. See, that's what's wrong with us. You want somebody else to pray. He said, I want you to do it. See, something my mom will say, I want you to do it at least. I want you to do it. And I said, well, mama, what I got to do? Mama, they right there. She said, I want you to do it. And God saying the same thing about you. I want you to come to me. I want you to get up in the middle yes, of the night. Excellent. I want you to get and talk to yes, me. Yes, yes. Yesterday I was, he said, I want you to sing to me. I said, God, now you know I ain't no singer. He said, but I want you to sing to me. Amen. So Amen. I would ride my bike and I would sing. Yes, yes. And boy, I felt the presence on the bike. Yes. I said, oh God, oh yes. I'm not up for licking that beat Oh, that big old shot. Because I felt the presence out there. Because yes. you got to understand, he's looking for some children. That's right, that's right. That's going to look like him. Yes, yes. He said, I can bless you because you're doing what you need to do. Yes, yes, Parents don't bless children that don't be that's obedient. That's right. That's right, Apostle. That's right. So why do we think that we're supposed to get all these blessings? You ain't going to give them like that. When you now be. Thank you, Lord. Obedient. We're talking about restoring the relationship yes, yes. with God the Father. Yes, yes, yes. I ain't talking about Jesus here the yes, morning. Yes, yes, 
I'm talking about God the Father. That's a big difference. This is another level of respect. That's right. That's right. This is another level of honor. That's right. That's right. Because you know what God the Father, yeah. He's the creator. Yes, He is the creator. Yes, he is. And you mean to tell me if I'm being a child of God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Elder, He ain't gonna let no folk do you no know, any kind of way. And he's not. He's not. He not. You keep talking about what all these folk doing. But if you're a real child of God, yes. you ain't got to worry about what they doing. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because he going to vindicate on your behalf. Yes. 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 He going to vindicate you. Yes. 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 He's going to vindicate you. Yes. Think about it. In the natural, you going to let somebody be with David Jr.? Nope. No, ma'am. I don't care what he do because that's a child. Yes. Yes. So what make you think that God is not going to vindicate you when he see you trying yes. to be his child. Amen. Every day, consistently. Yes, Lord. Yes. Amen. Lifestyle. Yes, Lord. Let's stand.